All right, good morning. It's Grace Baptist Church, Bloomingdale, Georgia. Brother Chris Hannon. And um, we um, welcome you to our services. Um, we're going to be coming out of Matthew chapter 19 this morning. Matthew chapter 19. Um, a story of the, the rich young ruler. Matthew chapter 19. Uh, it's also found, uh, not only Matthew chapter 19, it's found in Mark chapter 10, Luke chapter 18. Uh, and uh, you know the, the, this account is so important that it's mentioned t three times in Scripture. And we know that three is associated with spiritual perfection. Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. And so we know this is very important. And no, notice the statement of Christ here. Jump down if you will quick. Verse 21 of our chapter, Matthew chapter 19. It says, Jesus said unto him, if thou wilt be perfect. Right? Amen. And we know spiritual perfection is found in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Uh, how do you know that? Because he knew no sin, right? He is sin he's our sinless Savior. He became sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So it's a, say it's a scripture in 1 Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians uh, yeah, 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians. All right, but he says, uh, now we're going to read, begin reading here at verse uh, 16. Let's pick up the narrative. He says, and behold, uh, one came and said unto him, good master. What good things shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto them, Why callest thou me good? They were just something. You can't, you can't just butter up the Lord. Amen? He knows your heart before you speak. He says, There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. Now I want you to notice, this young man, he comes to Jesus. Amen? He comes to Jesus. Jesus didn't go to him. He comes to Jesus. And so this young man initiates this. Uh, in verse 18, he says unto him, speaking to Jesus, which Jesus said, thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The young man said unto him, all these things have I kept from my youth up. Amen. You know what? Uh, he had a good upbringing. Amen. Amen. He had some diligent parents. Amen. Y'all know he didn't do this by himself. Somebody was making him told the lie. He says, again, uh, all these things, what things? Uh, verse uh, 18 again, thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother, thou shalt love thy neighbors thyself. The young man said unto him, all these things have I kept from my youth up. Amen. Kudos to his parents. Amen. And kudos to him as a young man to observe these things, right? Sure. Watch this. What lack I yet? All right. Because he's under the impression that uh, if you do those things, then you were supposed to have eternal life. Again, the question is about, jump back if you will at verse 16. He says, what uh, good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Right? So, notice verse 20 again. What lack I yet? That's the title. I like the title of the message. What lack I yet? So he says, notice Christ's answer. Jesus said unto him, again, look at verse 21. If thou will be perfect, go, sell that thou hast and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. But when the young man heard that, said he went away from uh, uh, away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Now I want to show you something about this young man. Again, verse sixteen. Uh, uh, well, verse sixteen uh, says one came to him, uh, and he's a young man. Uh, verse uh, uh, Matthew chapter nineteen, verse twenty shows you this right here. That uh, again, he's a young man. Uh, Let's see, I want to show you some things about, um, go to, uh, about this young man. Uh, and, show, uh, and I want to show you something about his character. Go to Matthew, Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10, because here, here's the same account. But look at Mark chapter 10 and look at verse 17. Mark 10, 17. Look at this. That you don't. It's not mentioned here, but when you put all these together, that's what we call the synoptic gospel. They give us uh, when you we got Matthew, Mark, and Le, uh, Luke, and John. And Matthew shows Jesus Christ the King of the Jews. Mark shows him as a servant. Luke shows him as uh, the Son of Man, and then John shows him as the Son of God. Amen. And all those lineages lead back to there. But when you look at these gospels and they show the same scene, they'll show you different aspects of that same scene, right? If, I, if something happened out here, you know, we will all see it. But guess what? Because of individuality, who we are, we would all pick up on a particular thing, right? So my story may differentiate from your story, but they're both true. Amen. There's a lot of people that have problems with Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in the Bible. They say oh, they, they, they're not true because they don't, go, they don't coincide exactly. No. God uses man's individuality to show you different aspects. Amen. 
And so he says, uh, verse 17 of Mark 10, he says, And when he was come, uh, and when he had gone forth under the way, there came one running, now watch this now, and kneeled to him. Do y'all see that? That's not mentioned in Matthew. That shows this young man, you know, he has some humility about him. He kneeled, right? Watch this. Go, if you will, in Luke chapter 18, gives you the same account. Uh, another aspect of this account. Luke chapter 18 and verse 18. I want you to see some. So we know some things. Matthew showed you it's a young man. We, we understand he's a young man, right? We understand this right here. He has some humility. But watch this. Uh, he has a position. Look at uh, Luke chapter 18 and verse 18. He's called this. And a certain, watch this now, a certain ruler. Do y'all see that? Ruler asked him, saying, good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? So this young man, we know he's come from good parenting. He's come from a good home, right? Some, some religious people in that regard that regarded the word of God and made sure that he did. Amen. Uh, Y'all know it's incumbent upon parents to do that. Uh, the Bible tells uh, 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 bring your children up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. That's not the government's job. That's our job. Amen. That's our responsibility, right? And so, so we come from good parenting. We know he's a, a young man. We know he has a, a, a humility about him. He kneeled according to the book of Mark. And then in Luke, we find that this is right here. He's, he's got a position in life as a young man. He's a ruler. A ruler, right? So come back to our text now. Uh, so we got the, uh, we kind of see, see who he is. Matthew chapter 19. And notice this right here. This young man comes to the Lord. And I'm giving him credit. Now watch this. How many young people today, and I don't like to be a, 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 a what do you call it, a generationalist and all this kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, bad mouth one generation and everything else. But the, the fact remains this right here. Uh, even in my youth and probably not most of our youth, let me we didn't, hey, we didn't seek out spiritual things. At least he's doing that. Amen. He's coming. I told you, he initiated. He came here. Running. The other one passed his shows. Running. And then kneels down. But notice verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, watch this, what sh good things shall I do that I may have what? Eternal life. He's, he's asking a question about eternal things. Let me tell you something. The sad commentary is you got folks one foot in the grave, <laughs> one foot in the grave, and they still not concerned about eternal things. This man's a young man, and he's concerned. So the question is about eternal things. And so all these Gospels have, have this same account. Now watch this. Uh, notice the Lord's question. So we got the sinner's question, right? The, uh, 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 the, uh, the young man. And then we got the, the Savior's question. Look at verse 17. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. You know what Jesus was good at? He was always good at answering the question with the question. You know why? Because it showed something about the question. And it showed something about the people's heart that asked him, why are you asking that question? Amen. Have you ever, watch this, have you ever had anybody come up to you and ask you a question? And you ask them why they're asking the question? <laughs> and because you know the question that they ask you, you know, there's a reason why they're asking that question. <laughs> some people, you know, some people are legit, right? They're asking you a legitimate question. Some people, they're not legit. <laughs> they're asking a question to set you up for the next, for the next question. <laughs> And so, Jesus Christ, he was keen. Why? Remember, he says, brother, he's constantly dealing with the Pharisees and the Sadducees, amen? And every question, every statement, every scenario they ever gave, my brother, remember, it was always to catch the Lord. So, he's asking this man. He asked him that question. You know why he asked him this question? Are you sincere? Is this a sincere request? Do you really want to know? Amen. Have you ever asked something? Have anybody ever asked? Let me tell you, as a, as a preacher, you know what? People want to ask you questions. They want to ask you questions. What about this? What about this? And I say, you know what? And I, I can already tell. Sometimes I say, do you really want the answer? <laughs> do you really want the answer? Are you just asking a question? Well, I, I, I got an answer for it, but I'm afraid you might not like it. So do you really want this? Some, some people have said, no. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. I'm like, why? I said, like, why? You want that? No, no. I, I can already tell. I'm like, it's a biblical. I'll give you a Bible. Nope. I don't even want to know. <laughs> uh, I want to be ignorant now. I said, no. Because you know why? Because once you know, you're accountable to it, right? So watch this. So he asked him this question. Notice the Lord's question. The Lord always looking on the heart, seeing past the words. Amen. None good but God. He's the Lord. 
Watch. And so he says, none good but Lord. And Jesus Christ, in so saying, so he says, am I your Lord? Am I your Lord? And I want to notice this right here. He says, if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. He says, which? Which one will do it? Which one is the key to eternal life? And I want you to notice this right here. Uh, verses 18 and 19, for most of us, it's, uh, when this young man said all these uh, that I kept from my youth up, most of us, we look at this and say, wow, what a failure I've been. <laughs> what a failure. What a failure I was. Let me tell you what, Look at this thing. It says, thou shall, uh, uh, except for thou shall do no murder. <laughs> Watch this. Thou shalt not, thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Which one of y'all has not done that? If your purse is not close to you, I, if I was you, I'd pull it close to you now. <laughs> thou, shalt not, thou shalt not bear false witness. You know what that is? That's lying. We started against our brothers and sisters. That's where we perfect our art. <laughs> he did it. He did it. I tell you, my grandkids down to, down to Benny, old Benny, my youngest grandson is three years old, just turned three, and he's talking up a storm. He came out of the house. It's so something, something to just see him where he wasn't talking at all. Now, now all this stuff that Luke blamed on Benny. Benny said, Luke, do that. <laughs> Luke, do that. Luke, do that. <laughs> Luke, do that. Can't blame it. He said, I can't blame it on Benny. No, ben, Benny can talk. But I'm mean, looking at these things. He said, that's your, watch this. Honor thy father and mother. You know what? Somebody explained that to me. Uh, they said, when you're home, you're supposed to obey. When you leave, you're supposed to honor. That means the life that you live was supposed to represent where you came from. Amen. Amen. Honor. You come from good stock. Amen. Live like it. Look at this. He says, uh, thou shalt love thy neighbors thyself. We're never taking anything from our neighbor. We, we always sought the good for our neighbor, did we? Wrong. And I was like, look at this. I mean, this young man said, all these I kept. And I'm like, wow, look at all these I broke. I told you all before, as a kid, you just do crazy stuff. Why? I don't know why. Why I threw rocks at the neighbor. I do not know to this day. Because they were there, I guess. <laughs> look at my mom shaking her head. <laughs> I, told you, I wasn't bad. She said, I wasn't bad. She said, I was inquisitive. That's another, and then when you look up inquisitive, it says bad. <laughs> but watch this. Look at this we feel. All these I've kept from my youth up. And then I want you to know what a testimony. And I want y'all to notice, notice, nowhere in these passages, when we looked at Matthew, when we looked at Mark, and look, nowhere did the Lord look at him and rebuke him and tell him he was lying. He was telling the truth. Nowhere he looked at him and said, you're lying. Right? He said all these things, but I have, you know what? But why is he coming? Now think about this, verse 16 again. He says, good master, what th good things should I do that I may have eternal life? Now what that shows you is this right here. He's got all that stuff going for him, but y'all know what he does not have? He does not have peace about eternal life. Because why is he, at, or, or why would he be asking the question, Amen. So all this, 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 this list, amen, he said he's done these things. Now, I know I didn't have peace because I didn't do, I, I didn't, I wasn't doing those things, right? But this young man says, I've been doing them, the Lord did not rebuke him. And so still, why does he not have peace? Because, first of all, my brother, tells him, the law was never given you so that you could obtain eternal life. The law was given you, you know why? Grace and truth, the law, the Bible says law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Amen. And so the law was not given to justify. The law did several things. First of all, the law, it shows the holiness of God. When you go back there and you start looking at the Ten Commandments, one thing it shows you this right here. The Lord God, he's holy. Amen. Let me tell you something. You're not supposed to use his name in vain. Right. All these things. Why? He's holy. It shows you the holiness of God. The second thing it shows you, it shows you man's sinfulness. Somebody said a, a good bit of the Ten Commandments is negative in that it starts out thou shall not. Yes. You know why? Because we're prone to not thou shall not, but to do. So here's this guy. He's doing all this stuff, but he doesn't have peace. What a testimony. All right. The Lord didn't rebuke him. Matter of fact, uh, just for sake of time, you don't have to turn there. But Mark chapter 10, uh, Mark chapter 10 and verse 21 says this. When, when this young man said this, Mark 10 verse 21. He says, uh, then Jesus beholding him, loved him. So he looked at these young men, loved him, and said unto him, 
And, uh, and he said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come, take up thy cross, and follow me. And he was sad at that saying, and went away grieved, for he had great possessions. Jesus, uh, he didn't rebuke him, he said he loved him. He loved him, looked at him. He said, will thou be perfect, this is what Jesus Christ said. And you say what you want, you know what, this hit this young man like a load of bricks. And it hit him, you know where? It hit him where it hurt, in his heart. Because it's right here, the Lord, you know, the Lord gave, uh, when the Lord gave a list of commandments, do y'all realize this right here, when he gave that list of thou should, thou should do this and thou should, he gave, he left out one. The most important one. You know what it is? Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy strength, with all thy soul, with all thy heart. You know what he knew about this young man? That this young man loved his money and what it afforded him in this life. He knew that before the young man even asked a question. You see, let me tell you something. Some people come to the Lord and you know what people do? They think that, you know, they bamboozle the preacher, they bamboozle the church member and everything. Let me tell you, friend, you will never, ever, ever fool the Lord. He knows, let me tell you something, he knows your up, he knows your uprising, your down sitting, amen. He knows every aspect about you. And the Lord is always looking on the heart. Let me tell you something, out of the abundance of the mouth, the heart speaketh, amen. amen. He looked, you know, he brought the commandment, you know what, that the young man, he, he left out the man, the one that the man was guilty of. That thing which, watch this. Now, think about this. The thing which he lacked, now watch this now. The thing that he lacked was the most important. Do y'all realize all that other stuff doesn't mean anything if you don't love God? It doesn't mean anything. The thing that he lacked was the most important. That which he lacked made everything else, that which he lacked made everything else worthless. That which he lacked made him lost. Amen. I, well, you know what I I say that? Because uh, time and time again, I talk to people constantly. And you know what they tell me? I say, sir, you're saved, you're born again, you're a Christian. You know what they start doing? They start giving me a list of the good things that they're doing in their life. I go to church. I said, I didn't ask that. I asked, are you saved? Are you born again? I go to church. I've been baptized. I give money. I help the poor. All those things. Let me tell you something. Friend, all those things are in and of themselves good. But let me tell you something. If you don't love Jesus Christ, amen, and take him as your Savior, you know what? The, all those things are a moot point. Those things in and of themselves, the Bible says, for by grace are you saved, uh, for by grace are you saved, and not of yourself, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should what? Boast. And I'm going to give you three things about this and let you go. First of all, the, the, he, he lacked the, uh, the love of God, and his real love was his earthly possessions. Look at, look at Matthew chapter 19, look at verse 23. Why do you say that? Well, look at verse 21. When Jesus Christ says this, but when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possession. And you know what the Lord did? That, that gave the opportunity to the Lord to launch into verse 23. Look at verse 23. Then said Jesus unto the disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again I say, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of the needle than for a rich man to enter into uh, the kingdom of God. Do y'all see that? That's where that parable comes in. Why? Because that young man, you know what he, he, he put his riches above. Watch this. Friend, hey, did not he ask about eternal life? Amen. Can he take his riches with him? No. He can't take no, no earthly possession with him. But right here, he's face to face with he can have eternal life. But it's going to, it's going to, you got, you know what, Jesus Christ, you're going to have to trust me. Amen. Uh, salvation is all about trusting God, is it not? Amen. God said, you got to trust me. Right now, your trust is in your possession. You, you've had a good upbringing. Amen. You got, you've had all this stuff. But I want you to let all that stuff go. And you know what? You, gotta, you, you believe in God. you got to believe in me. you got to trust me. Look at, watch this. Go, go, uh, what, uh, Matthew talks about this. But look at, uh, look at M M Mark chapter 10. And I want to show you that I got this thing right. Go to Mark chapter 10. The same account. But notice what Jesus Christ says about it. Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. 
See, he lacked the love of God. His real love was his possessions. And my brother, you don't, you know, I find out. Guess what? You don't have to be rich. You don't have to be rich to trust something else. You don't have to be rich. You know, people that people, people trust in all the time. Some men trust. Uh, uh, tr they folks are trusting in their cars, their looks, their, their all kind of crazies. You don't have to be rich. What well, the problem is, this right? You're trusting in that instead of trusting in God. That's the problem. Watch this. Uh, Mark chapter 10, Jesus Christ shows you, Mark chapter 10, that it's about the trust thing. Because in Mark chapter 10, uh, we see the same scenario, verses 17 through 22. But look at verse 23. And Jesus looked around. Now, this is right after the young man leaves, verse 22. And Jesus looked around about him, saying, Who's the disciples? How hardly shall they uh, that have riches enter into the kingdom uh, uh, of God? In, you know, into the kingdom of God. You see that? So it's, it's a, uh, watch this, look at verse 24. And the disciples were astonished at his word. But Jesus answered again and said unto him, Children, how hard is it for them that trust in riches? Not just have them, my brother. There's nothing wrong with having them. Amen. But, but let me tell you something. I've been around a, a place in the world, and by some other standards, we are very rich. Amen. Amen. But my brother, let me tell you something. Having them and trusting them is two different things. And the Lord knew this right here. This young man is right here. He lacked the love of God because he was trusting. Let me tell you something. You cannot have the full love of God and trust in your riches. Amen. Amen. That's why he left off that commandment. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God. Right? With all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy might. Right? And have, watch this. Have no other gods before me. You know what God he had? Money. You know what God people people you know what people have? People make a sports God. Amen. They make a sex God, right? They make an energy. They make all these gods before God. Amen. Amen. He had an outward formalism, but a, a he watch this, but he lacked an inward love. Do you realize this is what 2 Timothy says? They have a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Let me tell you something. Uh, uh, like baptism, an uh, outward form, formalism. It's like baptism, choir membership, usher, tithing. Fasting and the list of God, all these will leave you always. Let me tell you something. They'll leave you in a pace this right here. But you will not have real peace. Because God knows those that are really trusting him. He doesn't have peace. Luke chapter, uh, go to Luke chapter 11. Here's an illustration. Luke chapter 11 that Jesus Christ gives. Luke chapter 11, look at verse 37. Luke 11 verse 37. 11, uh, 37 through 42, real quick here. And notice how Jesus Christ talks about the Pharisees. They had this outward formalism. But he's, notice how he says, y'all lack this. Uh, Luke chapter 11, look at verse 37. He says this right here. And he spake a certain Pharisee besought him to dine with him. And he went in and sat down to meet. And when the Pharisee saw it, he marveled that he had not... Oh, this is Jesus now. The, uh, and, the, uh, and, and when the Pharisee saw it, he marveled that he had not washed wash before dinner. Jesus not washing? <laughs> That's formalism. Watch this. Now watch this. He says, and the Lord said unto him, now, uh, uh, I, but I always like the Lord. I guarantee the man didn't say it out, out loud. I bet you thought, wow, man, don't even watch it. Son of God, God manifest in the flesh, the king of, king of the Jews and everything else. Man, ain't even washed. Just went to, went to munching. <laughs> he says, and the Lord said, unto, now do the Pharisees make clean the outside of the cup and the platter, but your inward part are full of ravening, a ravening and wickedness. Ye fools, do ye not make that which is without, make that which is within? But, but rather give alms of such things as ye have, and behold, all things are clean to you. But woe unto you, uh, 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 Pharisees, for ye tithe men. Now watch, he's talking about outward formalism. He says, woe unto you, five, uh, uh, you, uh, you, uh, woe unto you Pharisees, for ye tithe men and ruin manner of herbs, and pass over judgment, and what? What does he say? The love of God. These ought you have done, not to leave the other undone. You know why? Because my brother never tells them, without the love of God, all those things mean nothing. Amen. I'm not forsaken time. John 12, verse 42 and 43. Jesus Christ tells the Pharisees, "Ye love the praises of men more than ye love the love of God. John, uh, 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 John chapter 5, verse 39 through 42. Uh, we find this right. The Lord really knows those who love him. Amen. Amen. 
The love is based on the love is based on uh, the, our, our true love for God is based on you know what you love what He did for you. You know what He did for you. He sent His Son to die on the cross for your sin, and you understand that because John three sixteen says, "For God so what loved the world, Amen, that He gave His only begotten Son." And John and First John four uh, seven tells us, "Here in His love, not that we love God, but that He loved us first and sent His Son to be a propitiation for His for our sin." Let me tell you something, brethren. You can't. Let me tell you, you can't say you love God when you put anything above that. Amen. He lacked. He lacked. And my brother, let me tell you, you lack, he lack, when you lack the love of, of, of God, you know what you do? You lack the living for God. Amen. You lack the living for God. All the other commandments made, made him, you know what? All these other commandments, you know what? They made him look good, but not before God. Come back to our text over here, Matthew chapter 19. Matthew chapter 19, look at this. Back to Matthew, look at verse 22, 21 and 22. Jesus said unto him, Thou wilt be perfect. Go and sell that thou hast and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. But when a young man heard that saying, he went away. Now, every time I read it, I think about this right here. Eternal life. Didn't he ask the question? And the Lord gave him the right answer. He had an opportunity to really live for God. You read this right here? Jesus Christ tells him, look at this, verse, 20, uh, uh, verse 21. Here, here it is. You want to you wanna love God? You, wanna, you, you want eternal life. You want to live for God. You want to experience God. Here it is. Verse 21. Jesus said, If thou will be perfect, go and sell all that thou hast. Give to the poor. And thou shalt have treasure in heaven. Y'all know what about treasure in heaven? No thieves break through and rob and steal. Amen. Amen. He says, And come and follow me. You want to, here's the, here's the answer. You want eternal life. You, you want, you want it. You want to, you want to sleep at night. You want to, you want the peace that you've been lacking. Here it is. Right? So this, he had an opportunity to really live for God. But what does he do? He turns it down. He, he left sad. Y'all know what's so sad about it? Is he that the fact that he left sad? Amen. Amen. Y'all know I mean. Listen, y'all listen to me. I listen. Y'all know I mean. People darken the church's door, and you know what? They they come in there. They have problems. They have this, and they have. They're looking for peace. They're looking for security. They're looking for something something to answer the, the the questions of this life that have turned people's lives upside down through just myriad of things: alcohol, drug. You know what I mean? Just all kind of bad decisions and everything. And they they come to the church and they're looking for the answer. And you you know you tell them the answer is Jesus Christ. And what the Bible was telling you, say, here's the answer. Jesus is the answer. Amen. And you're telling this right here. Let me tell you something, friend. Jesus is saying, put your faith in me, put your trust in me, and come and follow me. And you tell them that. Like Jesus said, uh, remember people that want to follow Jesus? Jesus said, you going to follow me? The foxes have holes. The birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man had not where to lay his head. But you want to follow me? You're going to follow me by faith. Amen. You know how many people, you know what? Turn away from that. Walk away from that. Countless people go in, the, they go in the doors. They ask the question. The answer is given to them. And you know what? They go away sad. They're looking for something else. They're looking for, they're looking for easy. They're looking for the Lord to pat them on the back. Say, you already got this thing. Let me tell you something. I checked out my, li my life. Let me tell you something. I didn't come to a Savior, friend, because I had it all together. I, didn't, I came to a Savior, you know what? Because I knew I didn't have it all together. Here it is. Here's the opportunity. Here's the question. What shall I do? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Oh, but preacher, let me tell you something. I, I'm telling you, I sit uh, and counsel people. Uh, I, 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 man, it's, the problem's my wife. Hey, preacher, what should I do? I said, the problem's your wife. Oh, yeah, she's doing this and everything. I said, sir, you're a Christian. Well, you know, I'm not what I should be and everything. I said, I'll tell you what fixed the problem. I said, sir, you get born again. And I said, you bring Jesus Christ into that household. You know what I get? I get this long stare like, that's not the answer I was seeking. <laughs> My husband, he's running around here and he won't do this and this. I tell you what, you, you submit yourself to Jesus Christ. You let Christ, you let Christ work through you and walk and everything else. And every time you bring Christ into that situation through you, they're like, okay, good day, goodbye. <laughs> you 
He liked living for God. He had opportunity. Amen. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. See, when you lack the love of God, you know what you're probably lacking in your life? The living for God. Let me tell you something. All those things, again, you know what they did? They made him look good. Amen. But you know what? Guess what? If he didn't love God, guess what? He wasn't living for God then. Uh, uh, so 2 Corinthians, look at this. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians and chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, look at this verse here. 2 Corinthians 5, look at verse 14. 2 Corinthians 5, you know a lot of people think, they say, oh, y'all, y'all governed by fear. Y'all scared God going to do this or that. No, no, look at verse, uh, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, look at verse 14. For the love of Christ constraineth us. Do you see that? It said, for the love of Christ constraineth us because we thus judge that if one die for all, then we're all dead. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto who? Them, hey, let me tell you something. Before my conversion, I know what living under myself, I know what that's like. I know what that is. You know what that is? That's me, 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 me. Jesus Christ is saying, you want to live, love God. Let me tell you something. Live the Christian life. Listen to me. The real Christian life is always and shall always be where you put somebody else before you. Amen. That's the real Christian life. The real Christian life is what Jesus described. Take up your cross and follow me. Amen. Amen. And right now, let me tell you something, right now as, as, as real Christianity is growing much, uh, not, not so popular, I mean, it's, a real, it's a real opportunity, you know what, to pick up your cross and follow him. Verse 15 says that he died for all they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Amen. And so he lacked the living for God because you know what? It starts with the real love of God. I don't know about you. You know what? In my Christian life, I, I didn't start living for God till I found out the love of God which is in Jesus Christ. Did you? Watch this. Uh, well, I, I just said, John 14, 15 says, if you love, Jesus Christ said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Amen. John 5, 1 through, uh, 1 through 3 talks about his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. Uh, Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 says I am crucified with Christ nevertheless I live but yet, uh, yet not I but Christ liveth in me and the life which I live I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me Amen and so what he was again what he's, he, he, he went away sorrowful he had great possessions uh, let me tell you God, I remind y'all that Bible said what should a prophet in Mark 7 36 what should a prophet a man if he gained the whole world and lose his own soul he had great possessions, not the world. A man, somebody told me one time, a man is a fool who holds on to that which he can never keep. Amen. Do you realize this right here? All that we possess, we will give up anyway. Amen. Everything we possess, we will. Uh, I talked about the two kids and one guy was dying and, and they buried him in a gold Cadillac and a gold suit on and everything else. And one little boy was sitting there and said, man, man, that's living. And the one boy said, no, that's dying. <laughs> You cannot take it with you, right? It's certain, the Bible said, we brought nothing in this world, and it's certain we can carry nothing out. Remember I told you about the, the woman, her husband was so mean and greedy and everything else. When he died, you know what he did? He, he uh, uh, said, I want all my money buried with me. And so uh, the lawyers and everything else, when they went to the funeral and everything, to see what, what's going to happen, was his money going to bury with him? And so they was all looking to make sure his will was done. And so she wrote a check and threw it in the casket. That was all, for all his money. <laughs> when, <laughs> when was he going to cash it? <laughs> How about the man that was so mean and everything else who was like, why am I talking about people thinking they taking it with them? I mean, the Pharaohs has already tried that. What happened? We done raided all they left behind. <laughs> But remember the man, he said, he was so mean and he had a mistress and he told his wife, when I die, he said, I want my, I want to, my mistress, he said, I want, he said, I want you to sell the, uh, the uh, what is that, the Rolls Royce. He had a Rolls Royce gold plate there. He said, I want you to sell it and give the money to my mistress. And he put it in his will. So she sold it for a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> You can't take it with you. I don't care what it is. 
I don't care what we, we, we cannot do. We get so attached to this stuff. Like we going to have a friend. You rise our garage, garages are full of stuff that we was one time attached to. I'm going to get back to that. I'm going to get back to that. I'm going to get back. We're on our dying bed. I'm going to get back to that. You ain't getting back to that. Give it away. He went away sorrowful. He turned down. Listen, about it. think about it. He is turning down eternal life. He's turning down a place in heaven reserved for him. He's turning down. Uh, many mansions. He's turning all that stuff down is what he's doing. He lacked it. And friend, let me tell you something. What you lack, yeah, I'll tell you what you lack. If you don't believe on Lord Jesus Christ, I don't care what kind of riches you have. I don't care what kind of life you've lived up to that point. If you don't have Jesus Christ as your Savior... Let me tell you something, friend. When you leave this life, this is what Jesus said. He said, he said, uh, um, if you die in your sin, whither I go, you, uh, you cannot come. Amen? He didn't talk about what you had, your possession. He said, if you die in your sin. Amen? And the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish. That's more than dying because we all got to die. That's dying in your sin. Perish, uh, uh, should I perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world uh, uh, to condemn the world, but the world through him might be what? Saved. 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 There is a penalty, friend. Uh, the Bible says uh, 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 the wages of sin is what? Death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. What lack I yet? He left that which he could have had. He went away sorrowful. And he had great possessions. I imagine this man growing away. Growing, uh, he was a young man. And uh, hearing about the Lord Jesus Christ being crucified. And thinking about that as he grew older. And maybe he had his possessions and everything. And I don't know if he ever told the story to other young people. And said, you know, I had an encounter with Jesus Christ. When I was a young man. I went to him as a young man. I knelt down on the ground. And I had a face-to-face. -face. You ever notice the Lord Jesus Christ? He liked face-to-face. -face. He liked one-on-one. -on -one. Woman at the well, Zacchaeus, Nicodemus, right? Mary. I mean, he liked one-on-one. -on -one. And they said, I had a one-on-one -on -one with Jesus Christ. And they said, wow, you, had a, you met the man? Yeah, I met the man. That man, they crucified you. Yeah, I met that man. What happened? Well, I asked him about eternal life. What, really, what did he say? What did he say? Well, he said this, 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 this. And he said, but you know what he told me? He said, I, I, I needed to sell all I have and give to the poor and come and follow him. And can you imagine somebody said, did he say you would have eternal life? And he said, yeah. And he said, yeah. but you didn't, you didn't sell all you had? No. No. Didn't sell all I had. And you would think, man, what an opportunity. Amen. Well, now I want to ask you something. What, what has the Lord dealt with you about and say, you know what, this stands between you and me. This, this, this thing right here stands with the woman at the well. It was a relationship, right? Go call thy husband. Amen. You remember, right? It, with uh, with, uh, with uh, Nicodemus, it was his religious position, right? He said, you're, you're a master of Israel. You don't know these. Over and over, he would tell the individual what was hindering them, what they lacked between him, them and salvation. What is it that you lack? I hope you don't lack anything. Amen. Let me tell you something. You'll find all your sufficiency in Jesus Christ. Amen. He, let me tell you something. He, his death, burial, and resurrection, you know what that is? That perfects you. That perfects your salvation. Amen. That's what you need. Amen. Let's all stand for a word of prayer. We'll be